Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It is a wonderful thing to see people in these pews this morning. <laughs> welcome back to church. We also want to welcome everyone who is joining us via live stream. We are live streaming this service on YouTube as we will be doing from this point on so that folks can worship with us from anywhere. Today for worship, you will need a palm and a communion kit. So if you have not um, received those on your way in, there are some in the narthex on the table. If you are at home and would like to join us for communion, you'll need bread or crackers and wine or grape juice. Um, Sandy will be sharing with you in a minute our schedule for this week for Holy Week and Easter. But I'm also excited to share that we will be having a drive-through Easter egg hunt this year. We have bags of eggs that will be here at the church for you to drive through the parking lot anytime between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. to pick up a bag. The Easter Bunny will be here. Um, so come on out and see the Easter Bunny and get your picture taken. Um, and we look forward to sharing some Easter goodies with everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all. This is Pastor Melissa said. I am going to share the Holy Week schedule with you um, after today. We will end um, the today's worship in silence as we have normally done. Um, but we also ask as, um, as part of our COVID protocols, please let the ushers uh, let you know when to let you can leave your seats as we end our worship service this morning. After today's Palm Sunday service, we will move to Monday, Thursday. That service will not be held in person. It will be uh, put out there on live stream on Facebook and um, YouTube for you all to join and worship with us. And that will be uh, set to begin at 7.30. On Good Friday, we will gather together in worship at 7.30. We still have some spaces available, so if you haven't uh, signed up and reserved a spot, please do. Again, that's 7.30 on Friday. And then Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, it will be such a joyous time to be back together. First off, if you'd like, you can join uh, Trinity and Deer Park's um, ecumenical Easter sunrise service at 6.30 down at Deer Park at the pavilion. We will gather here to um, try to accommodate as many folks as possible for Easter morning, so we're offering two services. We are offering 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. The 8 a.m. will not be live streamed. The 10 a.m. will. Along with the 10 a.m., that service, the reservations, um, are filled. So we still have about 20 spots or so for 8 o'clock, so if you want to attend Easter Sunday morning, uh, go out there and sign up through the Sign Up Genius um, for 8 o'clock. You, if you're having trouble with that or not sure how to do it, you can contact um, Dave Kula, Pastor Melissa, or even myself if you need assistance to get your reservation in. Is there any questions from anybody on our Easter week? If not, catch us later and we'll help you then. Dave? Yes, the 8 a.m. and the 10 a.m. services will be the same. Yes, Ken? Okay. Um, what Ken is letting us know is if anybody would like to get um, some of the grocery uh, gift cards, we will be outside in the parking lot and we'll be able to help you there. Is there anything else from the congregation before I go into prayers? Okay. Um, for our prayers, we've had quite a few things going on. Hopefully, you're um, following them through our emails. But I did want to update you and let you know that Jeff Devin's mom, Bernice, did pass away Thursday evening. I haven't heard the services. Did he, Joe? Okay, we're not sure of any kind of service at this point. Um, but he thanks the congregation for all your thoughts and prayers. Um, we also want to hold Jane Trump in our prayers, who uh, unexpectedly lost her brother this week. Um, that, that's, I know that's hard on her. And most recently, we want to also keep on and say our prayers. She's had a multitude of different things going on and not feeling the greatest. So let's keep on and say in our thoughts and prayers. And also, Mark Grant, we continue. I think he's doing much better. But just that the strangeness of what happened with 
of the burning and eating and you see the swelling of it, it's esophagus area. It just, just reminds us all to be careful when we're you know, partaking of hot foods. So continue prayers right now. As always, um, email me, text me, give me a call, you know, whatever things out with the congregation, continuing as we have been. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude. Please stand as you are able for the order. No, not the order. God of palm branches and hallelujahs, 
we confess to the love of you on Sunday celebration. We love the sound of a joyful parade. We love shouting hallelujah. We love that on Sunday means Easter is just around the corner. We love good news. However, if we slow down and pay attention, we know that on Sunday, was not a walk in the park for you. There was risk. There was fear. There was the threat of violence. We were leading a peaceful protest against an unjust empire, and the whole world knew it. Forgive us for glossing over the courage this day took. Remind us that the story of faith is a story of courage. And even we can do hard things. With hope we pray. Amen. Family of faith, even when we gloss over the truth, even when our courage fails us, even when we doubt that we can do hard things, God believes in us. God loves us. God forgives us. Hear and believe this truth. We are known. We are loved. We are forgiven. Again and again and again. Amen. I now invite you to raise high your palm branches as we bless them. Thank you. On this triumphant day, let us join in praising the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now sing together here in this space for the first time in a year. Soak it all in and enjoy this amazing moment as we sing together all glory, laud, and honor.
of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> First reading is from the book of Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. The word of the Lord. Be the second reading is from the second chapter of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. She discovered that some of the kids were a little bit confused. 
and admitted that they had actually been shouting lasagna instead of lasagna. In the church, we have a lot of words that we use throughout the year that are central to our worship and our faith. And while we use these words, and they become an integral part of our worship together, we don't often take the time to stop and think about what they mean. For many of us, whether we have proclaimed the word a thousand times, or whether we're hearing it for the first time, the language is foreign. We could all easily be following Jesus, shouting lasagna too. Today we find ourselves in the beginning of the final week before Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus has been preaching, teaching, performing miracles. On this journey with him is a large following of people who believed that he is the Son of God and their long-awaited Messiah. That following became even larger when Jesus raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. Many who saw Jesus perform this miracle believed in him, but some did not, and they reported what Jesus had done to the Pharisees, a group of Jewish legal experts. The Pharisees, along with the Jewish high priests, called a meeting of their governing council to figure out how to put a stop to Jesus. And from that day on, they plotted to take Jesus' life. It was almost time for the Jewish festival of Passover, a time when it was customary for the Jewish people to gather in Jerusalem for the festival, because that's where their temple was. The chief priests and the Pharisees were on the lookout for Jesus in Jerusalem, having given orders that anyone who found out where Jesus was should report it so that they could arrest him. The time came for Jesus to make his way to the temple, and this journey turned out to be anything but quiet and unremarkable. The great crowd in Jerusalem that had gathered for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way, and so they welcomed him like royalty. They took out branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord the King of Israel. Hosanna. This is a word of joyful anticipation. We can imagine the crowds gathered, crying out in excitement and hope for the new day their Messiah will usher in. But there's more to the word Hosanna than that. It's also a cry for salvation. Hosanna is a Hebrew term meaning save, please. The crowd was crying out to Jesus for help, for salvation. Save us. What were those following Jesus that day seeking salvation from? Theologian A.J. Levine writes that for most of the scriptures of Israel, salvation is not about spiritual matters, but physical ones. The Passover, the setting of the Passion narrative, is about salvation from slavery. The crowds are seeking salvation from the oppression of Roman rule. They're calling out to Jesus, crying out for him to be their new king. The new king who will usher in a new day, a new rule. A king who is meek and humble, who rejects domination and wealth, a king who leads with love and compassion. A king who will save them in more ways than they could ever imagine. This cry for salvation, for help, is our cry too. What are we seeking salvation from? This last year, we have cried out to be saved from COVID. Please save us and the ones we love from this sickness. Save us from the fear, the isolation, the worry. Let the numbers go down. Let our places of business, our schools, our churches reopen. 
Stop the variants and resurgences. Let us give the shot. Let the shot work. <clears throat> the depths of fear, uncertainty, and despair have been deep. Hosanna, Jesus. Save us. Save us from ourselves. Our doubts that we are not enough. Not good enough. Worthy enough. Smart enough. Lovable enough. Stop our need to say hurtful things to and about ourselves. Stop our self-sabotage and the ways we prevent ourselves from living full and abundant lives. Hosanna, Jesus. Save us. Save us from the forces of evil in this world, from oppression and hatred, from violence, mass shootings, and abuse from racism, sexism, ageism, ableism, from all the isms that divide us. Hosanna, Jesus, save us. Save us from any and everything that separates us from God. Hosanna, Jesus, save us. Today, as we gather to celebrate Palm Sunday, we join with the palm-waving, Hosanna shouting crowd and follow Jesus into Jerusalem. We step into Jerusalem where salvation becomes our reality. By the incredible courage and sacrifice of Jesus, in a week's time, our cries will transform from Hosannas to Hallelujahs, from cries for salvation to shouts of praise, from pleading to celebrating, from despair to hope, from death to life. As author Debbie Thomas proclaims, today we begin a journey that holds within it the fullness of our human story, the highs and lows, the hopes, the fears. In the span of seven days, we do it all. We praise, process, break that bread, wash feet, make promises, break promises, deny, betray, condemn, abandon, grieve, despair, disbelieve, and celebrate. This week we see the light at the end of the tunnel, lose our vision of it entirely in the grimness of death, and then find it again, drenched in glory. Let us enter in to this holiest of weeks together. Hosanna. Amen. Please stand as we're able as we sing together our hymn of the day.
faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified and died in his grave. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We will not be able to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all those who need it. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation, awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them, that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer and grant respite and renewal. We pray, we pray especially for those on our prayer list and all we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body and death, to sustain hospice workers and funeral directors, bless this congregation's ministries at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who offer support and grief. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We pray you for the faith. We praise you for the faith you have given to the people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism, and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. We invite you to share your peace with one another with a wink or a wave or whatever creative socially distanced way you can do so. <laughs> diagnosis with uh, cancer in his knee area. He's been having problems with that. Um, but the good news is that the doctors feel that it is treatable, treatable and hopefully curable, and that all the stuff he has to go through to get to that point goes quickly, easily, and um, with God's loving hand, guiding him all through. And he finds out Tuesday when he goes down to have a stitch in that, um, and he starts his treatment. Okay. Well, let us know. We'll share that on soon. Well, 
Thanks, Mark. <coughs> beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven, accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, so that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join our unending hymn. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, 
At this table, you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has been made us new. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 